This is part of you now taking some of what you've gotten out of this experience of putting on that incredible December 9th town hall about the Universal Declaration of Human Rights to document your thoughts about it so that you can help teach others as they take on this project um, what, what they ought to know, what, what this project has meant to you and, and what we can do to make sure this project is meaningful as we go forward. So thank you. And I'll start by just throwing out a couple of questions and then I welcome you to speak up and if you don't mind, just be sure to say your name loud and clear so we know who you are and everybody gets to enjoy your comments. Um, so let me just start by asking what stands out as you look back as most memorable in preparing for and presenting the town hall performance? What comes to your mind as being most memorable? Just, Hi, I'm Justin Kent. Um, before we were about to begin, uh, we were all milling around backstage and I was kind of standing there and all of a sudden my heartbeat started to speed up like a lot and I get, it felt like it was going to come out of my chest and I've been acting for a while I'm not you know not, not a stranger to the stage but this felt different and maybe I didn't like realize it like mentally but my I felt it and so I've been thinking about that since we've done it like I didn't feel nervous or anything but I was I don't know in the moment I guess it was really really cool <laughs> Terrell Patrick, uh, all I remember is like when we first started, when everybody was backstage, everybody was, we prayed, and everybody was like, oh, good luck in your performance, and everybody was just like being, having, everybody was like basically being like very positive about the situation, whatever. but um, most of all, I just remember everybody doing good, and we just had a good performance. That's most of what I remember. I'm Melissa Wild. Um, one of the most memorable experiences for me was how we were staying positive, helping each other after stage. Like when we performed, we came back and we'd give props to each other and before somebody went up, it was a big deal to have that courage and to go on stage and to know that you have your peers behind you the whole time. Okay. Okay. I'm Molly Moreno and actually, I'm actually even nervous right now. So I just remember that on the stage, I was even like really nervous, but like before this, like we were a class together, we knew each other, but I feel like this presentation like really brought us all together, like like peers as a classroom, as a community, and I really enjoyed the experience. Anyone else want to comment? Okay. Um, a question um, in terms of creating the performance, how do you feel putting that performance together, preparing for the town hall, how did that help you learn about the Universal Declaration of Human Rights? How did, how do you, what did you find as a learning experience? Well, for me, um, we, I started off not knowing anything about the UDHR, and by having our teachers help explain it to us, and we decided to start off pretty broad and then we found a topic and then we researched it and learned more about it so we can make this show happen. Okay. Say your name. My name is Derek Bleedham and like it was it was weird like not, not hearing anything about the UDHR, UDHR and then every day for I don't know a month every every third block we would go into Miss Mo's class and we would just we, the whole time we would just do the whole class was just about the UDHR trying to prepare trying to talk about it, so, so it, it just really grows on me, and you learn a lot from it. Um, it we really had like free, free reign to, to kind of play around with it and do what we wanted with it, so it was like, it was like playing with clay or something. So I, like, by doing more, I think we also learn more by digging our fingers in there. Uh, my name is Andrea Lopez. Um, I think that like by like going in every day, we not only saw our perspective of the UDHR, but what other people see from it. Because some of the the like articles are very broad, like the marriage one, and you don't see like it's not just men and women. You know what I mean? And to somebody else, it might need something else. You know? So that's what I got from it. Everybody, I'm just remember everybody sitting down in the class, like talking like we had a big old sheet of UDHR all. It's just all 30, all 30. 
of the uh, articles, everybody discussing, everybody figuring out which one we wanted to do. We all like telling each other like, well, I can see you doing Article Five. I can see you doing Article One. Well, this is what you should do. This is what you should say. There's everybody helping everybody like understand the meaning and like and, and like going one direction with the with the UDHR. Like it was good. It was a good experience for me. Here we go. Um, my name is Camille Bernadas, and I think as everyone else was saying, how broad of the choices we had to make of what article we wanted to choose. I guess what I really remember and enjoyed doing was picking a topic or issue that was really um, close to my heart and something that was really something that I could elaborate on and express in my ways. And as a monologue that me and Justin did, it was a cool way for us to just show what we have inside and what really means, like what was really important to us. And for others, their dance, their skits, their um, poems, just having that variety as well. So from the variety of articles to the variety of um, art and creativity, it was just so cool just going up there. So I, I'm glad you brought that up. So I'd like to actually have you and Justin talk about the process and your point of view of which article you chose to do and how you work that out creatively to present it the way that you did in those perspectives, because I think that you two did something very interesting with your article. So if you could, whoever wants to speak um, first, which the article was, and then go back between the two. Uh, article 18, which is Freedom of Relief and Religion. And um, we kind of we kind of did the polar opposites, where I, ch I, um, I chose to show the, the non-belief side, the struggling with faith side, while she chose the very strong faith. And um, I want to commend her, actually, because I chose a monologue from the movie Cool Hand Luke, and I kind of adapted that where she wrote her own, totally from scratch. And I watched her go through the process of writing that, so I, I think she did a really good job. But um, having the two totally different sides, yet at the end coming together and showing that, like, just as the power of the EDHR, EDHR is, we're all humans and we're all connected, even if our beliefs are different. Yeah, and going off of what he said, it really did make me realize like how much respect and tolerance you have to have for others in order to like to maintain that justice. Because if if we're just gonna keep a closed minded opinion on your belief and not let others influence you or not let others opinions like not consider what they're feeling, then you're just gonna offend others and you're not gonna be able to to go out in the world and teach the world and to let others know what the human rights is all about. So. Mm -hmm. okay. What do you think is important about students like yourself studying the Universal Declaration of Human Rights? And why, why do you think, assuming you do, but do you think it's important um, and having an opportunity, as you did, to create and present a performance about the UDHR and human rights. That's a deep one. <laughs> <laughs> do you think that this is an important, do you think studying the UDHR is an important topic for high school students? I think I think it is important just because like the document is like lost like nobody like not a lot of people know about it and since we're learning about it and we like being the future academy like you realize that you are the future with everything you learn you know so if somebody came up to me and asked me what the EDHR was I know I'd be able to tell them and then I'd be passing it on to somebody else so I don't know I think it's important and what would you tell them if, the, if someone said you said, oh, they, let's say they saw your t-shirt. And I said, what's that about? What's that t-shirt about with UDHR? What, what would you tell them? Um, I, I, I tell them that it's like how every human should have the same right, whether it be not mattering what their beliefs are, but, or anything about them, their color, their, their ethnicity, or whatever. Like, or whatever, their gender or whatever, like you guys all should have the same rights, like to be, we're all human no matter what anybody says. Can I get a couple other volunteers? What would you, what, what would you tell them the Universal Declaration of Human Rights is, Terrell? 
I tell them like these are your rights as a human being. Like you are like these rights are for you. Like you these are things that you should know about. These things that that can actually help you in your life. Like nobody can tell you that you don't that you that you can't believe in what you can believe in. Nobody can tell you that you don't have a right to marry another race. Nobody can, nobody has the right to tell you that you can't say like say something if you wanted to say something. Like these these are things that you should know about and keep and keep it, keep on your mind because like like some I know I know to this day right now as we speak there's somebody probably getting their rights like probably violated right now. People probably don't have like like what is the right to shelter or right to social security. I know people out here like people in Haiti people I mean they're not part of America right but like they have the, they should have the rights. They don't even have to be a part of America, right? That's right. It's universal. <laughs> universal. I mean, universal. Just being <laughs> universal, so that that goes to picking up what I'm saying. Like these people are living in like shanty towns, basically. Like, like, <laughs> like these people. These people are living in shanty towns. Like they have to make their own homes. Like they don't have a like they don't. They're not getting rights to shelter. Like rights to like. They, rights to freedom of religion and stuff like this. The only thing they don't even know what the UDHR is. Like, just just to, for people to know that we have something like this and and like and, and not to use it in their own accountability. Like, it's it's mm -hmm. hard. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. Well, I was gonna say that if I had to explain what the UDHR meant, means, I think I would say that some of them we already have, like written down that we are supposed to be entitled to these rights, but some of them we're not. And I think that the ones we have, some of them are not respected, and the ones we don't have, we, sh we should have them. Like, it doesn't matter, like, your age group. We're teenagers, and we know about this, and I think we deserve these rights also. It doesn't matter your age group, your ethnic group, how you dress. I think we all deserve, like, to have the UDHR. Yeah. Um. When, uh, as we go through like all these history classes and English classes, we, we learn about these different events. You know, you learn about the Civil Rights Movement, you learn about the Holocaust, and I think the UDHR kind of puts it in perspective on why these things were important and why these things mattered and why people were fighting for the rights that they think we should have. Was there a, a right that you learned about that surprised you in terms of like, oh, I didn't know this was a human right. Can you think of one that it was kind of a surprise? Like I didn't, I didn't know we had the right to rest in Like, like, like uh, I'm just now starting because I just got a job. I'm just not noticing like an average American can work every day Sunday through Sunday. I'm, I'm just starting to notice things like. And, and at first, I really didn't know these things because, like, me getting a job, I was like, "Just I'm like, well, I'm trying to work Sunday through Sunday." And my boss telling me, like, "No, you can't work. It's it's against it's against the law that you can't work Sunday through Sunday. You have to have two days off." And like, like yeah, it's like it was really it was really like enlightening, like to know that we have the have these rights as a human. And like, I'm just now learning about it at age yeah. 17. Right. Like, it's very enlightening. Yeah. Did anyone else learn a, a right that surprised them that you, you had the right? I, I think like all the rights are kind of surprising because it gets from like really, really strong rights to like the like little rights that you would never even think of. Like you have the right to learn arts and the right to like take any class that you want or like learn any extracurriculars that you want, which is like, like I, if I was writing it down, I wouldn't have thought of that, you know what I mean? Like the simplest things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And just in terms of putting on the performance or creating the town hall, do you feel like that was an important part of your learning about the UDH? I mean, how do you feel that the um, idea of creating a culminating presentation from your studies adds or detracts, or how does it fit in with studying the UDH and making it important? It's, it's, it's kind of like, it's kind of unique. It's not just on a piece of paper telling you what it is. You get to express it in your own way. It's 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 pretty cool. Like when you 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 get to do what you want to do. You don't have to just listen to the paper. It's not just saying this is this. You get to you get to teach it to other people in your own way. 
I found by creating this after the show, people coming up to us asking to learn more about it, wanting to know how hard we worked, what exactly does it mean, and you know, by wearing this shirt, walking around, you get people coming up asking about it. Like it just stands out, and I think that it was a great job for us to do. Me be me just being like, just me just growing up like knowing that we have these like rights. Like I just like just for me to know these things. I know people can't play me now. Like. Right. I feel, I feel, I feel like, I feel like, uh, like, yeah, I feel educated. <laughs> I'm more educated on these rights, and again, to piggyback what she said, like, just to walk around school and people, like, asking me, like, what made you want to, what made you want to do that? What made you want to get up there? What, what, what gave you the courage to do that? I was like, gave me courage to like, to teach people about what we have, what we have, and. I don't know, it's just, it was just, it was just cool, um, just to do that. It'd be interesting to uh, see how these rights could have been implemented in certain historical situations and how people could have used this then and, and would have been different now. Um, I would like to learn, like, if I had the chance, like, to learn why some states choose not to make the UDHR, like, law, because I think it's, the things that they have on there are pretty important and some places like even here we don't have some really important stuff on our law I think that's kind of interesting I see um, on a more personal level I guess I just want to learn to like not take for granted all these rights that I have and to really learn to appreciate all the stuff that I have like in front of me and all the respect and tolerance I have with the people around me especially my peers because I know that, like Terrell was saying earlier, in other countries, in other states, people are mistreated in a different way and don't have the freedom that we have. And I would just want to learn to not take that for granted. After this UDHR town hall presentation, I feel much more tolerant of other, other ethnic groups and stuff because I see that they go through the same thing as I do. So I feel more tolerant of them. Um, um, wait, okay, yeah, um, I see myself, like, s I notice things when they come, like, you know what I mean? Like, when, like, I seen, like, they were picking on this little kid in my class, and I said something, like, because I noticed, because it was, like, because I've, it kind of, like, opened my eyes to, like, what really happens and how people really violate the rights, and, like, it, it kind of, like, feels, I feel bad that I've been, like, my whole life, like I've been seeing people do this and I never really notice. And it's like weird now to just like, y when you look, you see like what's really going wrong. That's great. Um, on my article that I decided to choose was number five about torture. There's different types of torture. It's not just slavery that happened. Um, there's domestic violence that happens and so I think that it, it was like pretty broad, but you can go in depth with it if you go into it more, and I think the UDHR helped me with that. Um, kind of like Andrea said, I just, I feel, I can't say that I've, you know, changed my life drastically by learning about this, but I think you, you just become more aware uh, and looking at all these things, and it's, it kind of makes you sad that it takes something like this to make people think of other people as people. Back on what everybody said, like it does, like it, you do as a as a kid, like like you grow up, like say, like you like you learn about something, you learn about the Holocaust, an example, like you just learned about, like you you just learned how people was like being blamed because of their race and who they are. But as you get older and know and learned about UDHR, you you know that like 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 it's hard to explain, like but it's like. You just learn, you just see, you just look at things differently. 
like you notice more like what they've been saying like you would see something like you see somebody getting picked on because they're race or picked on because they're like, possibly or homosexual like you notice these things more and like you like you contemplate more about it like wow these people are really getting picked on and uh, girls are getting beat by their boyfriend and stuff like this like you actually like think about it more you just don't be like oh whatever go on with my life like you'd be like wow like this stuff actually happens and what can what can you do to like change it what can you do to help but it's like there's so much stuff going on so you don't know where to start basically um, I personally just want to encourage anyone whoever has something like deep in their heart that really wants to step up and just express themselves to not hesitate at all in any way or circumstance to not be ashamed or whatever for whatever they may believe because it's important for everyone's voice to be heard and for, for everyone to, to really realize that their opinions do matter and that they can make a difference through one little thing. It may not be the biggest thing, it may not be the best act, it may not be the one everyone talks about, but it will make a difference and yeah. Is to, to anyone who's who's gonna do this, just throw yourself into it, like Camille saying, just give give your whole heart, because you there's nothing else like this. This I, I I'm definitely counting this as one of the best experiences that I've that I've had, and on stage, off stage, just something that I've done as a human being. So just put yourself into it, do all you can. You're not gonna get another opportunity like this. It was totally cool for me, cause like I really like like all the idea of music, you know. So like I really wanted to be like right there handling the sound music and all, but like it was totally cool when I saw everybody of my all my friends doing their thing. It was like I love this world. <laughs> and you know um, the people that are editing uh, the t uh, the performance, which will you'll have copies of DVD. But they said the sound, everything went so smoothly in terms of uh, looking at it and getting it ready for production. Um, and so you can take a lot of credit for making it work so well. And again, this is a good example, and I don't know if you want to talk to this about this, Jose, but hardly any rehearsal time with tech. You know, the microphones came in, and some of them were going out, and Jose was switching microphones out. And I said, give this one, give that one. So we were just figuring out some sound cues, and you were just really right there on the board. Same thing with lights. So, yeah, it was really good. Like my AP, like, read my, read my, like, thing I was going to say, and she was, like, totally going to snatch me out the performance, like, no, you can't do this in front of the people. Like, they thought, like, they thought I was just going to, like, just not to, like, they didn't know, they thought they didn't know what I was going to say. I was just going to go up there and say it. Like, so they was just, like, totally like, wait, you're going to say this? Like, can I make a copy of your thing? I'm like, no, you can't make a copy of it, no. I'm like, so, like, it was, like, for, like, a, like a day or so, like, I thought it wasn't going to be in a performance, but they let me go, so. Didn't one of the girls get mad at you from the audience? I think so. But then once you finish your whole monologue, what, what, did pe what did some people come up and say to you afterwards about what, were, did anyone come up and say what they got from your monologue? I mean, yeah, I got, I got good feedback, bad feedback, haters. I got, okay, for example, what, give me an example of what some of the good feedback was and then tell me what some of the bad feedback was. Good feedback, I got like, wow, that was very powerful. I never thought of, I never thought of like those words like, like that. I never knew there was really in the dictionary, people saying that. And some of the bad feedback was like, uh, like, like, I just got a whole lot of bad feedback. Like, why would you go up there and say those words in front of everybody? I had it's adults in the, in, the, in the audience, you don't have any respect. And uh, some people were just hating, like, I didn't like you, I didn't like it, and you could have did way better. And, people like that, but I overlooked it because like me inside, I'm, I was happy with myself just to know I can get up in front of an audience and, and be confident with myself and do those things. People just so. hear those words and they automatically get offended. They don't, yeah. they don't look at, they don't take time to see what the real meaning of the words are. Or what Terrell was yeah, actually was trying, to say. trying to say, which was so powerful that you recognized. Shut down. After they heard the words like, what, you calling me a yeah, that. Yeah, that. <laughs> like, you call me that, you call me this, like, what? And just, they just never got the, the full message of the, the of that, speech. They totally disregard what the word actually means yeah. and then use it. And I, and I read the actual, like, 
definition of the word, so I didn't want people to really get mad like of it. So I, that's why I read the actual definition of the word. Of course, on the other hand, I think that when you ha the thing that I've always thought about with the arts and uh, cr being creative to speak up in sometimes a controversial way is it spurs some controversy, which actually opens you up to have good conversation because then you actually can change some thinking yourself and others to say, oh, now I understand what you were trying to do. So it actually can open things up, even though an initial reaction might be negative. Uh, if you stay with it, it gives you the chance to actually create some good communication. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like the controversial parts of the like skit or whatever were, um, were the parts that are most memorable because people are not going to forget the things that like made them mad or, you know what I mean? Good That's point. something they're not going to forget. That's right. That's a very good I, point. I was thinking about um, what Terrell was just saying and, and the, the positive uh, side of, of his performance. I mean, I know the superintendent of the district was at the performance and was thoroughly impressed with, with Terrell's performance. And I think that to go from having, you know, people not necessarily want it to be said on stage um, to then suddenly having the superintendent acknowledge and say, wow, I'm so glad that I was here today. I'm so glad that that these thoughts were put out for the community to consider. Um, that's huge. That's 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 what this is all about. It opens the discussion. It it, um, it creates the possibility for for more dialogue. Um, and I just I thought that was for me that was one of the most um, memorable moments. So when I after like when everything everything was done, well almost I went and ran like to like, to to um, stage. Well, at first I, I stopped at Bill, at Mr. Bills, one of the teacher, our teachers, and said, and I told him, hey, will it, will it be cool if, like, we, if as the guy, people that did the sound could speak up some that they want to? And so, like, I was the only one. So I said that, like, um, it was, I'd probably say, like, it was cool to, to do, like, like the sound, you know, and if if like if any other students could get like have trouble any subject at school, like math, science, anything, just just look at us right now and and remember us, cause like we are here to help you guys to achieve it. So so you ain't so you ain't got a trip or nothing. So mm -hmm. you know we're here to help you and you helping us too. It's like the same as we you did the same. I mean like we did the same to you and you did the same to me. Together we'll graduate and go to the top. Yeah, yeah. And um, when when you and I first met, when I came to the school the 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 first time, um, what did you? Did, how were you thinking you were going to be involved in this project? Did you, did you, how did you see yourself being involved? Did you know what, what changed? It seemed like something changed, like the way you were like so involved. Well, at first I thought uh, I wasn't going to be a part of it, but then like right after, like, like when we were, like a week before we were start her, her um, practicing with that, mm -hmm. I thought, man, I was like, I had that one feeling that I wanted to be in it too. Mm -hmm. So so I got like real emotional. So uh, mm -hmm. so so I wanted to get in there. Well, what do you think changed? What, why all of a sudden did you want to be in it? Do you know? Yeah, cause like I wanted to get um, to to do something with it. So 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 those guys are not the only ones to be, to be heard aloud you know i wanted to do it like like them because i wanted to be recognized to the world because we like we most people don't got, don't ever get that chance to be heard aloud so, mm -hmm. you know, so that that's what was my main thing to be recognized and heard and show the world like Back, back them up like the guys who were dancing and singing and all. So I crank up the volume. I want the singers to sing there. Mm -hmm. So, 
So it was cool. Yeah, yeah. And that's important, Jose, what you just said. The reason it's important is because you recognize that even though you weren't on stage performing, your job, like you said, to crank up the sound when they needed it so that they could be heard, that was your part in making not only yourself recognized, but people being heard. So I think that was really important that you saw that. And that's what I was hoping that you would say. Yeah. I'm very proud of you. Yeah, and, I, you know, and I'm still feeling the same because I want to like keep doing that, keep doing the, the work and the sound music, you know? Mm -hmm. So it will be like cool if I keep doing it. That's great. All right. Thank you. Yes. I'm really proud of you. I'm really proud of you. Adam Susan, so I thought it was extravagant. <clears throat> okay, any other particular words? My name is Mike Day and I thought it was exciting. Like, exciting. Okay. What 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 stands out as, as a as a strong memory for you as being part <clears throat> of learning about the Universal Declaration and preparing for the town hall and putting it on? Is when Terrell did his monologue and started saying half the girls in there are bitches. I can never forget something like that because that was funny, but he made a point to that. Anybody else have a, another memorable experience? Uh, my name's Nathan, and I thought, I thought when Matt was singing, I thought like, that was really cool because like, that was the part that like, really touched me. I thought, it, like, yeah, it was really sweet. You touched me, Matt. touched me. <laughs> um, uh, I'm Danielle, and I had more like of an emotional memory. I just remember like everybody in the back and like in the backstage was just like so supportive of each other. Like honestly, I didn't expect to have it like that much of an emotional impact on myself, but like everybody just like became closer. People I'd never talked to, maybe I said a couple words to in class, were just like, oh, I believe you can do this. Just go out in front stage. It's okay. No one's looking at you. I'll be looking, but it's okay. Like making jokes, just making you laugh and like feeling comfortable. Like they just, everybody just became closer. And yeah, I don't know. I just remember that a lot. Uh, another like part I liked a lot was uh, like when Martha and all them started dancing because like there's a lot of chaos, I guess, or something about like, I don't know. I forget what happened, but like they didn't know what's gonna happen and all that stuff. And then like in, in the end, I thought like I shouldn't say it. I didn't think I didn't think it was gonna be that good. But then when I saw it, I was like, wow. Like for like you know, oh, that was pretty tight. When people were you know going up there and you know acting or sharing or whatever they wanted to you know present, it's kind of made me realize that what we had as you know on the document and how it was being violated and how people weren't you know even knowing about it and just you know totally like throwing around like. I don't know how to say it really, but you know, just you know, seeing how what we have and how it's not being used in daily life, pretty much. I think I think the play uh, helped, like, reopen the facts of like people getting harassed and stuff. Like, when Day Day was going in the store, and then she, like, I've seen that so many times, but I didn't really pay attention to it. But then when you watch it, like, up there on the stage where everyone's quiet, it kind of really affects you, and you're like, wow. Like a lot of people think, you know. A lot of different things and you don't really realize until like you really it's like if you record yourself or record somebody it's like you don't really realize till you actually see it up there it's Carla Becerra and when I was up in stage I felt weird because I was talking in Spanish and I know like half the people over there didn't understand me but I think it like represented freedom for everyone because not everyone is gonna stay to live here and they will want to move somewhere else and I think we should all go wherever we want to go. What right were you, were you focused on, Carla, when you Freedom created? Freedom of nationality. Okay. Freedom of nationality. Um, also, like we, uh, me, Jasmine, um, and Alicia, and Christina did a poem about like freedom of marriage, and. Um, like you like it, you know like there are different types of marriage such as like gay marriage arranged marriage um different interracial marriage and stuff and like people are so set on the typical marriage like they don't think about anything else and whenever you mention something that's different like gay marriage people get you can hear it, like you hear it in the audience you know like people we're we're trying to teach people 
to be understanding of other things, to learn that everybody has the same rights. But people are still so hypocritical about it. Like, they, their minds aren't open to something different. Everybody's so set because nobody's taught them, like, what's right and what's wrong. Like, they're set on what they've heard as is disgusting, that they aren't open to. And it was just kind of hard to perform something that means so much to you but means so little to something else, somebody else. And they made it bluntly clear, like, booing you down. Like, not booing, but making disgusting sounds. Like, ew, that's disgusting. You know, so it made it hard. I don't know. At the same time, I'm proud that, uh, that we were able to do that and get the word out that we all have the right to that freedom, even if people don't like it. Uh, right that you were creating and why you chose to do a dance and describe the process of creating the dance. So say your name. Okay, well, my name is Martha and me, Maite, Sarah, and Noelle did a dance on freedom of movement. And to us, like at first we were like, oh, we're going to dance, it's going to be fun. But then we kind of realized like it's difficult you know, not being able to enter somewhere where you're trying to go, maybe you're trying to get a better life and you can't get in there because people won't let you. So we created like a border and I was like the center. I couldn't, I couldn't really get around. Even if I tried punching, kicking, screaming, they wouldn't let me in. And to realize that people actually had to work for that, you know, people had to fight to try to get into places. It's now like, it, it's like, wow, we got in here, you know, we made a difference, like people made a difference by working hard. What do you think is important about students like yourselves studying the Universal Declaration of Human Rights? My name is Miguel and I think it's important because it shows us what, we, what rights we have, it shows us what we can do and how people can be violating our rights. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Kind of like, you know, Piggy back off of his or whatever. Um, like, I think it's important because we need to be more informed citizens. And if you, if we start learning now, we could like learn about the really, like, effects the world kind of has on everybody, and like how 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 the world kind of corrupt. And like, if you if you teach us this, if you teach us this now, and it, like it is really important. If you teach us this now, we could actually change our ways in the future. Okay, um, what, on what he said, it's like, yeah, now you know your rights and you can help yourself, but not only that, you can help other people that may not know their rights. So it's like you're helping yourself and you're helping other people around you. So it's great. I would like to learn a little bit more about gay rights and like how people get discriminated because like I used to make fun of a lot of gay people and like I didn't realize how much it could affect people and like it, it really hurts because they're just, they're just a person. That's all they really are. It's just a different way of living. And you know, I could easily be, or someone else could be, just could easily be like, you know, manip manipulated, or that word, too. So. Uh, I was just kind of thinking how we can input it into the Constitution today. Not like every single thing, because some people might not agree with everything on there, but like some of the things so we can get more of a, um, law against it that way like like we have laws against slavery and laws against like um, your working rights and everything but just seeing more things on there you can make like a better future for tomorrow. Well I say that they should do it again because it's a fun experience and it will help others like know about it and so they can understand it better by the way they express it you know so I think they should do it again. There were the two people that were on stage that never spoke, but that were the um, symbols. The symbols, yes, of of not knowing about human rights but receiving human rights. I, I was wondering. I understood the people that developed that idea are in this class. Um. So my name is Dominic Quinn, and the way I came up with that idea is that I just think about like how when you learn about something new, how would it like affect you? So I think that it would like change your thinking, change your life in a dramatic way. So I'm taking that literally into the play and making the person actually change over the time of the play. So I think that's kind of reflect and let people know like why is it important to study the UDHR.
you know, I invited a couple of artist friends of mine out to see the show, and they said, you did a great job, and I had to say, I, I did not write anything. I said, I gave a little bit of coaching. I said, every idea on the stage, the young people created those ideas. And that's not been the case at other high schools that I've worked at, where I've had to come in and give a lot of ideas and really guide it. And so this school for me as a working experience has been the best school that I've ever worked with on this process because something about you guys, this academy that you're in, there's something really special about what you're doing because that you're able to come up with that idea. And Martha, the way you talked about the dance, because I saw you guys struggling a couple times like, and you know, getting upset and getting frustrated, but you stuck with that. And I, I thought the dance was really powerful. The music of the glass breaking and the horn and, and all of that, and you picked all of that. And so t for me, it was really, really strong. And seeing Terrell have his epiphany to go, oh, the dictionary. Now these words have deeper meaning. Everybody, you guys deciding that you'd come up on stage and be like, oh, this is kind of boring. What is this? And open it up for people. So it, it was really strong. What everyone created, what everybody created was really, really powerful. So I'm very proud as just an outsider and an artist that's been involved to like, oh yeah, this can be done. And that's why it's really important to me that you all stand up and talk about what you learned from it because you will be an inspiration for young people throughout the United States. So I want to thank you because we are embarking on something very special together. And um, you, you've now become teachers as well as the great students that you are. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for agreeing to do this. And as part of our ongoing effort to document this project, I'd like to just start by asking, why did you decide to be involved in this project? I guess I can. Yeah, go well. ahead. Well, I, when, when, um, when you approached us, I'm Rebecca Lacoque, um, when, when the Rex Foundation approached us, and um, I don't remember if it was you guys or Facing History or who, who made the initial contact, I think it was, anyway, I think it made a lot of sense for us as a small learning community um, because we, um, we are future leaders for social change, and um, we, we've been looking for and, 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 and wanting something to sort of glue us together in our efforts to um, develop the leadership capacity in our students. So human rights, I think, really spoke to us um, just as an initial response, you know. Um, I'm Meredith Morris, and um, I remember it was last year that we got to see the, the DVD, I think, from mm -hmm. Balboa. And, um, I had actually never heard anybody talk about the UDHR other than myself in my own class, you know. Um, and so I was just really excited to hear that there were other people who were thinking about this and working with it and using it in a creative way. And so it just kind of set that little little spark of just like oh, the possibility, you know, of what could could be. And um, so that's that's how it worked out for me. Uh, my name is Kevin Beal, World History. Um, I've been working with facing history in ourselves and being involved in this uh, small community for about 10 years and I had bumped into Rex before but not on a found like in an, a uh, official capacity and Jack at Weinstein at facing who I've done a lot of work with in the classroom and I really uh, like the style as well as what we get in terms of understanding from kids using that curriculum and so I thought um, in addition to what Rebecca had said, uh, I'm a world history guy. I knew about the document. I also knew that nobody really uh, knew about it. And so it, it um, when Rebecca talked about using it as a glue to tie all of us together, I also saw some real exciting opportunities for just my class and, and being able to uh, get the story of world history in a bigger level. And not just the dates and, and people and what happened past the test. I'm looking for a lot more than that. It's hard to do. Um, you need a vehicle sometimes. And this one definitely, uh, well, when, when I saw the Balboa video, I was scared. I was intimidated. I've never done drama. I've never done anything close to that. I work in a classroom with kids. And uh, when I saw that, 
Um, and then when I met you guys, uh, believe me, I, I was uh, a lot of sleepless nights there re getting ready for that one. You know, just because it, um, I don't like to fail. I definitely don't want to look stupid doing it. And uh, this will be the first time through it. And it was all on me and Rebecca and Meredith. In particular, Meredith and I carrying those juniors. And so, um, yeah, it was a little uh, both exciting and uh-oh. Teaching English, it's very... Um, it's very possible to look at each piece of literature through the lens of the UDHR and kind of talk about the characters, you know, which, which rights does this character need, you know, which, which rights does this character need, you know, how would the situation have been different if this character had had these rights, you know, and you can kind of play out all these possibilities and analyze the text um, through that lens. And, and so um, it's also possible, and there was some curriculum that Rebecca actually brought into her classroom um, to have the students you know go out and kind of see how the UDHR applies to their lives and so to kind of monitor you know um, do they feel like they have full access to their rights and kind of go home and watch TV and look at people on TV look at their family members look at the people that they meet on the street or how people behave on buses or um, you know just how do people treat each other what's going on um, so I think to have it working on those two levels personal and then also sort of more analytical mm -hmm. um, and looking at text, you know, that made it possible to take the jump, mm -hmm. you know, from, from what we were doing in the classroom to making it happen on the stage, you know. I think I would add, that, add to that also, I, I only, I mean, my role in this was, was, a, was a little bit more on the sides, but what I did with the ninth graders, um, I was surprised by how, I mean, I think teenagers are all about their rights. You know, they're all about what they can do, and, and adults are very much about what they can't do. Um, that's the way that schools are set up and the way that our society is set up. And, and the kids were so much readier than I, um, than I feared they wouldn't be. <laughs> you know, they, they were really ready um, to think about it. And when we did the exercise where they had to go into their community and try to sort of identify in their personal lives and in just observing around them, I, I really actually was quite nervous that the next day no one would have done their homework or that they would have these examples that didn't work. And they really had just, it just really was their language. And, and so many of them um, still say, I had no idea that those were rights that I could even have as a, as a kid. And I think Terrell's role was perhaps the most poignant for a lot of them because what he was saying was, I have these rights and that means I have these responsibilities. And I would say 90% of even the ninth graders got that. Um, some of them didn't, some of them were, would, you know, but hardly anybody. The kids really understood that, wow, if those really are my rights, I, I sort of have to, I have to grow up then. I have to take that seriously. And the ninth graders were really ready to do that. And I think in the Future Academy, we teach everything through a human rights sort of social justice lens anyway. And so I think for me as an English teacher, this is a great tool because I've always struggled with how to kind of create projects and activities and, and how, to, how to lead discussions around human rights. And so this sort of offers a framework and a lens which is, which is great and easier. <laughs> it's nice to have it as a tool. Well, the opportunity to use the creative arts in this project, um, I could see how it would definitely work in terms of them retaining and remembering things. My concern was being able to make it happen, you know, and um, given that I don't have the gym or the stage, I'd have to got to go and kind of figure out who's got what, when, and can I get in there. Uh, never done lighting, never done sound, never done uh, just blocking on a stage. Any of those things were definitely running through my head as Great idea, let's use the creative arts. How am I gonna make this happen, given my experience and time, and uh, clearly a team of people came together to make this happen. Um, but, uh, and I think uh, the majority of kids that still talk about it and that we have, uh, I was getting emotional hearing them talk about it again. It was funny, as I, it's been six weeks or something, and there was a lot of things that kind of hit me right there. Um, just listening to Jose, listening to Trell, and I think it uh, using the creative hearts. They put their heart and soul into, mm -hmm. and it sticks with them, and I hopefully for their whole life, you know. And the things sometimes things I teach when they forget the next day, you know, um, it's not that important to them. I, I think um, at least yet. Yeah. So one of the students was talking about really being able to get his 
his ha hands in it, like mold, or like clay, um, clay yeah, <laughs> not mold, yeah, yeah. to mold it. Um, and I don't know that without the creative arts that would have happened. I think that they were able to embody the rights. They were able to, to own the rights in a way that had we done it, even if we had, in our English way, had them you know, write a poem about it and, and write um, uh, a personal narrative about it, I think that's powerful and that's what we always do. Um, but they also said you know, their rehearsals were so poor, but there's something that happens in the moment. It's like you know, when you're running a race and you feel sick beforehand and then you just run the heck out of the race and, that's, and that has meaning. It's important for things to have, to be celebrated in a community, in a community setting because it, 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 it put it up and it made them stand up and, and be... Yeah, it made them stand up. It made that's them why stand they nailed up. That. They yeah. had to. Uh, that was it. Uh, Derek, the, the baseball mm -hmm. player, I think, said mm -hmm. it, you know, he knew, uh, gonna have to hit now. Uh, th this is, uh, and they're all yeah. out here. And, you know, I'd already, they already saw who's here, you know, right. you, they're all gonna be here. As the, the entire district office, you know, there's gonna be parents here, there's gonna be a lot of people here. And, and backstage, yeah, yeah they were, uh, boy, you wanna talk about people's guts getting tied, everybody. I mean, it was mm -hmm. uh, bouncing around in there, you know, like ping pong balls. But um, that's the, that, those, aren't those the exciting uh, things, you know, in life? You, they really put themselves in it and uh, they still get a lot from it. They see people that see them, but they have, you could tell just talking to them, they, were, they, they, um, they own it. And Derek said that, you know, in school, the, um, the papers are always talking to the students instead of them having the opportunity to sort of speak to the text itself. Um, and I don't know exactly how he said it, but some, something along those lines. I was just thinking that's, that's the thing, that's, that they got to own it, mm -hmm. they got to, you know, absorb it and then put it back out there. And any time you get to be the teacher, it means right. you know it, you know, you have it. And so they were the teachers and they got to um, think about it in their own way and that, that's, that's the difference. They'll never forget it. They'll mm -hmm. just never forget it, so. I mean, I'm kind of crazy in this way, but I'm a firm believer that if you kind of give students something and then just let them like, <clears throat> you know, kind of go where they need to go with it and then kind of mm -hmm. stand back and from time to time step in and go, what? maybe we need to, you know, work with this. Um, that they really do amazing things. I mean, and when Ellen said um, that she, it wasn't her, like, saying we should do this. I mean, I didn't do that either. I was like, okay, guys, what are we going to do? And they, they guided the project. And then um, once they had chosen their, the articles that they wanted to select, then we talked about what they could kind of do with the articles, but they, they generated their own brilliant ideas. And then it was just a matter of us kind of keeping everything organized, kind of just um, project managing, you know? I mean, trying to get them to practice and get them to think about themselves in, in the space, this, you know, um, how they're gonna move on stage. And, um, and then there were the other things, the sort of things on the periphery, like technology and the music and all those things that magnificently came together some in some crazy way <laughs> but but it really it, it was about them it was about trusting them and trusting that they they knew what they needed to say and they, they did I couldn't done it obviously with all the support people that came also I mean <laughs> Ellen came uh, Sarah came right we had other people that came and helped us like how did, I, I gave the kids some ideas of how to block on stage how, how to how to turn something like a document into a skit. Uh, Facing gave us some, some early lessons to intro the project, mm -hmm. uh, kind of icebreaker, here's kind of some things to work on, right? So, but uh, there was definitely a lot of coordination involved. Two students in particular stand out in my mind, um, Jose Rodriguez, who we, I'll, I think actually I'll let you talk about Jose, because you just feel it. But for me, Terrell Patrick, I, was so proud of Terrell Patrick and the pride that he had after he was on stage. Mm -hmm. It was just, it was like the thing he needed um, to be a leader um, and to take that kind of challenge outside of sports, mm -hmm. outside of like his normal activities. Um, it, he's such an intelligent young man and, and just getting to like, have that moment on stage and have people from the community acknowledge him the way that they did um, was a very special, special thing. And he still, like, if you talk about it, he'll, like, have this little, like, little sideways smile, like, this little, like, kind of little smirk, like, where he just, you can tell he just 
feels it. You know, it's like he, it was a really big event for him. And um, I remind him of it sometimes because he'll have like a bad day and I'm like, you know, like don't, re don't lose sight of what, what you have in you, like that capacity, because it really brought out something in him that, um, that I had seen, but not to the same, the full extent that I saw it that day. And it was huge. Yeah, that was, that's huge. a big marker in his life. Yeah. I mean, we've known, I've known Terrell, this is his third year. And I mean, everything from suspensions to fights to uh, threatening to be expelled. Um, definitely, had, he's on the up, right? And this one is a real, you know, a big signpost, I think, for him. And he's, I mean, everybody that comes up to him, they see him different. And as a result, mm -hmm. he sees himself different. And um, no suspensions since then. Um, he said more with that microphone at the end of that performance um, than he said all year as a sophomore. And um, he also wrote a written reflection that he doesn't write very well. It takes him a long time. He has to work very hard at it. Um, he wrote a written reflection for that. So, and you know, Jose, I, that was an off the cuff kind of a deal. Let's, let's uh, put Jose on sound. No, I, I, a lot of people in my ears like that, that's a mistake. You shouldn't do that. You're gonna run the soundboard, right? Uh, in front of all these people. Jose, I couldn't put him on stage. He didn't want to do that. He wasn't able to, to perform there. He wanted to be part of it. And uh, he wants to be involved in putting on shows and doing sound and lighting and stuff after that show. So. Uh, empowered? Yeah, I think he's pretty empowered from it. Yeah. And he's, he's going to have the opportunity to do more um, sound because the the woman who's in charge of our like perf you know performing arts and music um, stuff on campus invited him after the performance. She said, "Jose, you know you did a great job, and I would love to have you come back and do work with me." And so he was just like, oh, wow. oh, "You know, yeah, I, mean, I mean that was like," and and he wrote two reflections too. He yeah. wrote he's he came to me and he said. Is it okay if I write one for Mr. Beale and then one for you, Miss Mo? Because I'd really like to write two reflections, you know. And it's like, the fact I mean, that he, would write, that uh, he doesn't. He doesn't. He very, wants to write. Yeah, he doesn't usually write. Um, <laughs> and so this was like, and he keeps coming to me and saying, "Can I write a poem about the UDHR? You know, can I make a poster about the UDHR? You know, because it's just like, it just opens something up for him." Yeah. Every day since he's been in the classroom at lunch, all of those kids that not just his crew in third period. And he's new to the academy this year. It's only, this is his first year. I taught him in world history in a non-academy class. Um, he's there every day. All of the fourth period juniors who he didn't know are his friends, mm -hmm. right? He considers all of them. So for him, that was a physical, real deal of being invited and included in that family, and he's part of it. The only thing I would throw in at the end is just that I, again, I've, I'm with the ninth graders, but the ninth graders, some of them knew Terrell, um, sort of from a distance or from sports and and they all recognized I think something in Jose and I think Terrell and Jose became leaders that day I mean I think they had their own epiphanies and their own yeah, grand moments right. but they they became um, ninth graders in their reflection they said I, I can we do that when we're juniors you know I think a lot of the students identified with Jose and Terrell and really um, really wanted to have the same opportunity. This was phenomenal for Jose and, and Terrell, and it, it reverberated for many, many, many kids. Um, and I think brought up a spirit of like kind of hope and promise and inspiration for a lot of kids, mm -hmm. not just those two, you know, which is yeah. maybe obvious, but yeah. you know, it did a lot for the other kids. I, I would say definitely um, front loading a lot of you know, just experience and exposure to the document prior to jumping into mm -hmm. this. Because I, we did have some students who weren't in my English class who are in honors who didn't know mm -hmm. anything about the UDHR and had no idea, and they were lost at first. And we had to really figure out how to include them, and I had to pull them aside and talk to them about it and, um, and try to give them, like, a quick, you know, okay, here's the history, because they um, the honors class isn't in the future academy. So they, you know... And they were kind of sad about that. They kept saying, oh, I feel kind of like I don't really know, and everybody else knows all this stuff. And so um, I would just definitely say if it's possible to have a core group of students um, that to, to do months ahead of time, you know, just um, a lot of exposure, a lot of in-depth history, a lot of personal writing, mm -hmm. a lot of, you know, applying it in lots of different ways so that they're comfortable and they have it in their tool belt before 
you know, going into the project. But that probably goes without saying. But um, you know, that, that was really helpful. The students who had all of that ahead of time just knew how to go, you know, and the students who didn't have that exposure at first, I think, felt a little bit awkward and, and had to learn. I think it going. was really important also, and we're a small learning community with 350 students, and so that's a really special thing. But I, I think one thing that we did well that I would recommend in any community is to make sh to, to educate as many of, as many of the students as possible about, about human rights and UDHR, because even, of course, the kids on the stage owned it, but the students in the audience knew a lot about the UDHR as well. And so it was a, there was a shared, understanding going into it and there wasn't as much a it was more of an experience rather than a teaching that you know the people on the stage weren't sort of introducing the UDHR mm -hmm. um, they all had including the ninth graders 10th graders 11th graders everyone had thought about it and I thought it was fantastic Meredith with the students made these posters and put them up we were even sort of trying to educate the whole campus so that the teachers would have an awareness and the students who were seeing the shirts and seeing hearing about it and, and whatever would you know so that we could we could we could get as much kind of support and buy-in and learning happening as possible and I think that that was even with the faculty you know because right. we decided to we gave, like, put the yeah, UDHR yeah, in everyone's uh, mailbox you know and everybody and, and so sent everyone out got a, a copy of it know. on bright red paper mm -hmm. I think it was yeah right and then um, Sandy you had written that letter to the the staff so and mm -hmm. I had written one as well and so you know we just it was kind of an opportunity mm -hmm. to say hey what we're doing is really mm -hmm. important you know and I think having the superintendent here like kind of right. you know I mean not that we needed him to be here but like it just having him here kind of made mm -hmm. it seem like this is this is a really important thing that we're doing here so this is not just some you know like touchy-feely you know like, like mm -hmm. oh this is how we feel about stuff it's like this this documents important mm -hmm. and and it needs to be acknowledged and we're taking the time and the space to do that and, you know it was I think that's important too. 